Download the free Bloomberg application available at the App Store and stay in touch with your money wherever you are. Bloomberg Mobile. We turn now to our partnership with Planet Forward, a program that brings experts and leaders together to create innovative projects in the areas of energy and sustainability. Today's innovator, Michigan State University, a professor there, is building robots which actually look like fish to help assess underwater contamination from disasters like oil spills. Planet Forward's Frank Cessno has the story. The most famous mechanical fish scared the heck out of millions. That was back in 1975. But now there may be a new fish in the water, a whole lot friendlier. Meet the robofish. Its role in life is to detect pollutants, underwater oil spills, even algae blooms. The robofish came to our attention after Michigan State University professor Jai Bo Tan uploaded this intriguing video to planetforward.org. Right now, these robots, as you can see in this lab, they can move and swim in this uh, very calm tank. And when we visited Michigan State, we discovered that Tan has already taken his concept to a new level. We we'll see basically schools of these robots patrolling coastal waters, uh, ponds or lakes or even river, and they talk to each other on the water and uh, communicate. Tan believes fish like these could be equipped with all kinds of sensors, from cameras to lasers to oxygen level monitors. It could revolutionize the way we monitor our waterways. In the past, the challenge has been that robots are dependent on battery power, limited range, limited utility. The professor's prototype harnesses the Earth's gravitational pull to propel it far beyond the limits of a battery. It's essentially an underwater glider. Prototypes exist, but research money backing this technology could take it to new depths. Designing these mechanisms in a smarter way, we can extend the life. The ideal case is you want a year, two years. Because one idea here is that you have a swarm or school of these things, and, uh, and each one is supposed to be simple and, uh, and cheap, small. Right? And if it has to be very big and expensive, then we're not getting any, much advantage of what's existing. The key to this innovation is micro-mechanical system technology, the fish's tiny sensors. They have to be smaller, lighter, cheaper, and incredibly rugged to survive down here. It's downright Darwinian to move the planet forward. And we are joined now by Frank Cessna, director of the School of Media and Public Affairs at George Washington University. He's in Washington tonight. So, Frank, take the Gulf oil spill. How would robotic fish have helped in that situation, and how much would they cost? Well, if Dr. Tan's vision is correct, those fish would have helped a lot because each one of those little robot fish, he says, would cost, if it goes to production, about $3,000. You could put a school of them in. They could be programmed to swim in grid patterns looking for those underwater oil clouds. What they had instead was they had these uh, 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 ROVs, robotic-operated vehicles. They were those underwater submarines, and they had to be operated by joystick and other, and other ways but from the surface, and there were only a limited number of them. In fact, James Cameron, if you remember, the movie director offered his own private fleet of submarines. So you could actually deploy these little fish, three grand a piece. You could cover a lot more water, look for a lot more bad stuff, a lot more inexpensively. All we need is that tiny technology, those sensors uh, that they're looking for out at Michigan State, and who knows in what other lab. No kidding. Interesting stuff. Thanks, Frank. Sure. Planet Forward's Frank says no joining us from D.C. And if you have an idea you'd like to submit to Planet Forward, visit planetforward.org. And for more environmental and sustainability news, make sure to check out Bloomberg.com slash sustainability.